minutes. Thank you. Um, so, question I have is uh, clearly, you know, we're hearing about diversion and concerns around that. I can tell you right now, you can go and buy toxic drugs in any community across this country and die, which is happening right now in our communities. What evidence do you have that diversion is causing harm that you're hearing from the Conservatives? And there's very strong evidence that people receiving safer supply have reduced overdose and all cause mortality and re reduced emergency department use and hospitalization, but no evidence of harm from diversion of safer supply medications. This is according to the coroners in both British Columbia and Ontario, and there's no increases in youth seeking treatment in British Columbia. So if diversion is a barrier to funding, what scientific published evidence uh, are you relying on or are they relying on the people that are spreading this information to make uh, these claims? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, just, just to be clear, what, what the Minister described the Department doing right now is just really systematically taking stock of the evidence in the situation, but primarily on the ground with the projects that we are, we are funding. So there's no, we have not made any determination at, at this point whether the, 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 the harms are occurring. We're acknowledging that many have expressed a concern. We're taking the concern seriously. <laughs> We uh, have responsibilities with respect to the funding that we're providing to the, the projects which we fund, and we're taking those responsibilities seriously and working with the communities to understand, or the projects to understand that they have the appropriate safeguards in place. That, that's okay. really at the extent of the Thank examination you. which we're pursuing. Well, we're hearing from law enforcement that this isn't the issue. They're more worried about toxic, unregulated street drugs that are killing people. And there is obviously disinformation that's being spread. It's, you know, I met with healthcare workers last week, and they were saying that this is causing enormous harm, not just to the clients and their patients, but actually to the people working on the front line of this crisis. What is your government going to do to get the data out and information campaigns about actually what benefits safe supply has? to their patients and how it's lowering the uh, people that are uh, the amount of deaths and the risks of those people that are using perhaps uh, with your permission dr. Weiss is spearheading a, a comprehensive uh, study of the, uh, the, the the project so maybe Sam if you could speak a little bit about that work mm, uh, absolutely so uh, the Canadian research initiative for substance misuse is evaluating both uh, safe supply in 11 uh, sites across the country it's in the third year of its examination uh, and first publications have happened. We're also evaluating the decriminalization of the Section 56 exemption for BC through this arm's length uh, evaluation by the um, uh, health academies and research hospitals. And I think that the point um, uh, for the, that the honorable member discusses is critical to all aspects of services that are available and can be available to people who use opioids. Uh, that need to be, um, uh, they need to be alerted to what is available, whether it is harm reduction, whether it's treatment, whether it's recovery. Uh, what the data actually shows is that the vast majority of people are not accessing the services that are available. And we don't do a good enough job matching the actual needs with the services that are available, whether that's through a more comprehensive uh, public um, discussion of what's available through uh, various uh, communication needs, uh, but all of these services Thank are. You, Dr. Weiss. Uh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. 